I'm going to be speaking tonight out of the book of Psalms, Psalm 126. Now, we've all heard the preaching on the sower soweth the word. We've all heard messages on sowing the good seed into people's hearts and lives. Tonight, I want to talk to you about sowing seeds in heaven. It's really a beautiful thought when you think about the fact that we're just sending things ahead around the throne of God. I'm glad I sent my forgiveness ahead. So when I get there, forgiveness will be there. Amen. I'm glad I sent my faith and my joy ahead. So when I get there, I'll feel the presence of the Lord and I'll know that everything's going to be okay. Your worship and most sincere moments with Jesus Christ are now gathering around God's throne for that great and glorious day. I believe that. I believe that when we worship the Lord, we kick up a glory cloud that goes up into the presence of God. I believe it is a sweet-smelling savor that roses up to the nostrils of God. Psalm 126 Let's stand for the reading of God's Word, songbook of the Bible. It's in the middle of God's Word. Have you noticed God put a songbook in the middle of His book? Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I want to talk about sowing seeds in heaven. You may be seated. Seeds are God's amazing miracle. You can take a seed that's small and put it in the ground. When conditions are right, that seed will sprout. And all the things that that is going to be is in that seed. And that seed is powerful. Have you ever stopped to think about how powerful seeds are? They're so powerful that everything that they're going to be is already in that seed. And when you plant that seed in fertile ground, that seed sprouts by the blessing of God. And it comes up and it does what God made it to do. I want to be what God made me to do. How about you? I want to be exactly what God has called me to do. Now, in the beginning of this verse 1 of Psalm 126, it talked about they were like them that dreamed. They dreamed of being released from Babylonian captivity. They dreamed of a brighter day than this one that we're going to. They dreamed of a better world than what they were in. They dreamed of freedom. And in this Psalm 126, they are basically released out of Babylonian captivity to go back home. I call them heaven's newly released people. The Lord turned again. I'm so glad that God can turn again and again and again and again and again on our behalf. How about you? There's one thing that I learned as a young preacher long ago. It's one of the most fruitful things that we could do is Plant seeds in people's lives. Words are seeds. And as we go and talk to people about God, and we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're planting seeds in people's hearts. The heart is a growing place for God. And if the conditions are right in that heart, wonderful heavenly blessings will begin to protrude out of one's heart. Matthew 13, 3 says, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. 
The Bible says that he sowed seed, and some seed fell on the wayside. The fowls of the air came and devoured the seeds because it was just planted on hard ground. Some seeds fell on stony places, and because it had not much earth, it was mostly rock, when the sun would come up and the persecution would arise, Oh, they would come up quickly, but they couldn't survive because of the heat. I want you to know, children of God, you can survive no matter how hot the heat is on. Because God has not planted us in rocky ground. He's planted us in fertile ground. Amen. And then there's the seed by the thorns. And then those thorns, I call it the busy, busy, busy guy that don't have time for God. The seed falls on thorny ground and because of the cares of this world, because of the things of this world, because those things that we allow to crowd out causes the fruit to become unfruitful. But then Jesus says in verse 8 of Matthew 13, there's the good ground. And some seed falls on that good ground. And that good ground comes up and it is a good heart. And as that seed is sown on good ground, it brings forth some 100-fold, some 60, and some 30-fold of fruit. I want to shout right now that there is no wayside in heaven. There is no stony places in heaven. There is no thorns in heaven. There is nothing but fertile, wonderful ground in heaven. God wants us to learn to sow our seed, our good seed, into heavenly places. Now, until then, I will sow seed in the earth. I want to sow seed. I, I love to see people hand out tracks because those tracks got seeds in them. And people will take those tracks and they'll read them. And I used to pass out, oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 billion of them when I was young. I don't know how many, but a bunch. Everywhere I went, there was a big old stack of tracks in my shirt pocket, and everywhere I went, I'd hand people tracks. That's a good idea because a track will stay, and a track will go home with them. And they're not going to let you go home with them. But the track can go home with them. That track can get in their pocket. That track can stay in their business. But they're not going to let you stay in their business. And so we plant the seed of God because the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So we sow the word of God in people's lives. And those seeds are powerful. Those seeds may be dry and dormant for years, but you let a little storm come up, little water begin to penetrate someone's life, that you've sowed the good word of God in their heart, you let a turmoil or a, a, a time in their life begin to touch them, and all of a sudden those seeds that you had planted years ago will begin to germinate and burst forth life, and God will bring forth fruit in their life. Seeds sometimes look so dry. And to look at one, you think that little fella couldn't do a thing. Oh, my. Years ago, I, I, I liked to plant zucchini. And I thought, well, you know, I need two rows or three rows of zucchini. And I planted three or four zucchini seeds because they look so pathetic, little white things. And I put them in three rows. My goodness, we had zucchini running out of our ears. Truckloads of zucchini. You, we would boil them, we would scrape them, we'd make bread out of them, we would fry them, we would cook them. We, I mean, it, it was like manna. You do everything with it. Till finally we said, cursed be them zucchinis. We just wanted them to go away. And so we went in the neighborhood peddling zucchinis. How much you want for them? Nothing, just take them. <laughs> A seed is powerful. And we need to learn the, the power of the seed, for faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
And when we share God's word, and God's word is seed as we plant it in people's lives. And as we plant those seeds, whether it be wayside, fowls come on, steal it, stony ground, uh, among thorns. But we're always looking for good ground. And I'm convinced sometimes a seed may lay dormant for a while. But you just keep planting those seeds because those seeds have power. And those seeds have life. And this is a whole bag of seeds. This is everlasting seeds. These seeds are so powerful, heaven and earth shall pass away, but these seeds shall not ever pass away the words of Jesus Christ. This Bible will stand forever. And it's just full of life and full of seeds. I want to talk to you about sowing seeds in heaven Seeds are powerful. And the better the dirt, the better the climate, the better the conditions, the better the seeds grow. And so we take heavenly seeds and we plant them in the presence of God. Sowing seeds in heaven. Some people sow seeds in the earth. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8 and 9, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of his Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now you notice it says in due season, a season of crop, a season of fruit, a season of harvest. If we'll not faint, the season will come, and we shall reap if we faint not. I'm grateful for the fact that God has given us energy to just keep serving the Lord. I'm glad he gave us a church where we can get recharged. Amen? Sometimes we just need our battery changed. Hello? Hello? You say, I don't have no battery in me. Oh, come to think of that, I wanted to talk to you about that. Yes, you need a battery in you. That battery is called the Holy Ghost. You need a regeneration of the Spirit of God. You need God moving in your life, touching your heart. And when we worship God with our sincere hearts of praise, we're planting seeds in heaven. Today, we were planting seeds in heaven. Oh, yes, we want to plant seeds on the earth. And we want to plant seeds for people to come to Christ. But once we're saved, we ought to start planting seeds in heaven. Our treasures need to be put in heaven where the gophers can't get the seed, where the rats can't get in under the Dirtberry hills, the potato hills. We need to throw seed in the presence of God because up there is fertile ground. Up there, it's guaranteed life everlasting. We don't want to sow to the flesh. We want to sow but a spirit to the spirit of God. And the Bible says that if we'll sow in the spirit to the spirit of God, by the spirit of God, the Bible says we're not to be weary in well-doing because the season's coming. And when that season coming, we'll just keep loving the Lord because we'll reap a harvest if we faint not. God's heart is a big, big. When you look at Matthew chapter 13, and it talks about the seed falling by the wayside, the stony ground, the thorns, the good ground. He's talking about the heart. Some seed falls on the good heart, good ground. And I know of no other powerful place to plant our seeds than in the heart of God. Amen. I was going to share this, share tonight what I'm about to say this morning since 
heaven intruded and well didn't intrude heaven came and did heaven's business and took one of our loved ones home but I'm going to share about how God loves us talking to his children we're his children I love my grandchildren and I like to watch them play I mean like to watch your grandchildren or your children play I like to watch them play and oh, they'll just be having a wonderful time, and I can have a good time watching them have a good time. Shoot, I can lay back in the recliner and have a wonderful time, and I don't have to go anywhere to have it. I can look at them grandbabies running here, running there, running here, running there, and let's lay back and glory to God. I don't even wish I had the energy they have. And those little guys, they're having a good time. And you know what they'll do? I'm looking at them like the Father looks at us. And he's watching us have a good time. And those little grandchildren of mine come by and say, I love you, Papa. Woo! Hear me. We need in the busy routines of our life to stop and say, Father, we love you. In the midst of our work, in the midst of our yielding to God, we need to stop and say, Father, I love you. It may not mean much to you, but it penetrates the heart of God. It's sowing seed in heaven. Amen. Amen. Sowing seed in heaven. Why? Because God has a big heart and he's generous. Did you know heaven has rich, fertile ground? There are no sticks, there are no debris, there are no thorns, there are no rocky ground. It's all good ground. And once you become a child of God, we ought to learn to plant some seed upward as well as downward to those that are down in sin, plant the seed downward. But let's plant our seed upward because we lay up treasures in heaven. Let's plant seeds in the heart of God, in the rich, fertile ground of heaven. So that we'll see a harvest. God is a giver. God's got a big heart. And he's got a generous heart. And so we plant our seeds in our future. We plant seeds of praise to God. Seeds of worship to God. We plant seeds of, Father, I love you. We plant those seeds, we send them forward in praise and worship to God, and we honor God and we give God glory. What are we doing? We're just planting seeds in God's fertile heart. Amen? And there's good fertile ground, rich ground in heaven. God is a big, generous God. How many of you know that's true? Your ground is rich in God's kingdom. And as we give our hearts to Jesus Christ, we plant Seeds in God's kingdom. Our first priority is to plant seed in our loved ones that are not saved, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our first priority is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our loved ones that don't know him. Our first priority is to sow seed and, and bring forth the blessing of God. Notice verse 5 and 6 of Psalm 126. Turn, uh, verse 5, they that sow in tears Reap in jo- shall reap in joy, and he that goeth forth weeping, watering those, bearing those precious seeds, watering them precious seeds as we sh- shed tears, and we shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him, meaning he'll take the corn sheaves, the wheat sheaves, and cut them and throw them over your shoulder and march them down home and say, look what I found. I sowed some seed and I've got a crop and I, and friends today, we need to sow more seed in our family, the seed of God's word. We need to sow the seed at the waitress table uh, when she comes to wait on you or he comes to wait. Sow some seed wherever you go because those seeds are powerful. Amen. Come on. God is a giver. And he wants to bless us. The ground is rich and fertile In God's kingdom, God has a big heart, and he's generous. 
Do you know God's generous? When he made air for us to breathe, look how generous he's been. There's so much air out there. I mean, you can be a big blow bag and survive out there. Amen? Often I say to God, you take my breath. You're a breathtaking God, but you're also a breath-giving God. You notice how much water God put on the earth? You notice how much space he put between us and heaven? He said, our forgiveness and the mercies are as vast as the heavens. That's a whole lot of mercy, a whole lot of grace. The Bible says he cast our sins as far as the east to the west. East and the west don't meet. They forever go in the opposite direction. And when Jesus Christ saved my soul, my sins went one way and the other sins went that way and they'll never connect and I'm free, free indeed in the power of Jesus Christ. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Mm. God is generous. God's a giver. John 3.16 says God's a giver. He so loved the world that he gave his son. The Bible says he gave his son and withheld not his son. He freely gives us all things because of his son. In fact, he asked the question, shall not he give us everything that pertained unto life and godliness through his son? Amen. Thank God we can sow some seeds homeward. Amen. Oh, we can work for God. That's good. And we can work to have the blessings of the Lord in our life, and that is wonderful. But we need to remember that God is a God who gives. He's a big giver. And he's such a big giver. He never runs out. Have you ever noticed that? God loves us, and he never runs out of love. God never runs out of love. Hello? God's resources, he never runs out. I can get in my car and I'll run out of gas. I can be busy and I'll run out of energy. I run out of money. Hello? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes when I'm preaching, I run out of friends. Hello? But God never runs out. God will never run out on you, and God will never run out of forgiveness for you. God will never run out of love for you. God will never run out on his children. God doesn't run out of mercy. God doesn't run out of grace. I love that song, Josh, when the uh, you team sung tonight, the grace of God. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Judy, you did awesome, amen. I love the name Judy. I just like that a lot. And I like the name James too. Pretty cool, huh, James? Yeah, hallelujah. I'm sorry that your name ain't James, but anyway, that's okay. (laughs) Oh, I'm just teasing. Quit looking at me like that. What's wrong with you? Brother Chuck used to say when he'd show up, he says, just when you thought it was safe. (laughs) Have you ever heard him say that? Just when you thought it was safe. Shoot, I never thought it was safe any time he was around. But anyway, (laughs) he's my buddy. But we need to, on purpose... Handfuls on purpose. Send seeds to God. Plant some seeds in heaven because they're eternal. They're amazing. And when you're weeping, it may endure for a night or for a season when you're weeping. Just remember, as you sow those seeds, notice verse 5. I read it a moment ago, 126 of Psalms. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing, carrying the burden of precious seed, 
shall without doubt come again shouting, rejoicing, bringing in his sheaves with him. We are guaranteed successful with God's word. I love it, don't you? The Bible says then, verse 2, our mouth was filled with laughter. I've been around some folks, their mouth wasn't filled with laughter. And their tongue was singing. That's pretty good, laughter and singing. Then said they among the heathen, Woohoo, the Lord had done some great things for them. The Bible doesn't say, Woohoo, I did. But the Lord has done some great things for them. Amen? When you can shout in the storm, when you can give God praise in the hard moments of life, the heathen will say, what's up with this guy? What's up with this woman? They're happy. They have no reason to be happy. Yes, we do. His name is Jesus Christ, eternal life, and the presence of God. We've got every reason to shout, every reason to praise God, every reason to worship God, because we are going to a place better than this one. We are saints of God, and we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and we're just sending seeds and planting seeds in heaven. Amen. No worms to eat the crop. No drought to, to, to stagnate the growth. No rocks, no, no uh, tainted soil. Just nothing but blue skies. Nothing but sunshine. Nothing but life and eternal life. When you send your seeds to heaven, they transform into everlasting seeds that can never die. Amen. I'm, I'm convinced when a song is sung properly to the Lord, that song will be at the throne room of God forever. I'm convinced that when you worship God, whether you're crying in tears, I'm convinced that when you enter into the throne room of God, everything you do in that throne room becomes eternal. Praise the Lord. When you get inside that throne room, everything you do, all your praises, all your worship, all your glory to God, all your singing, and all your sowing seeds become eternal. Nothing, nothing, everybody say nothing. Nothing, nothing dies in the presence of God's throne except for sin. Nothing dies in the presence of God. And we don't take any sins to the throne because Jesus squeaky cleans us up before we get there. Amen? I believe the devil says every now and then about you, they're just so stinking squeaky clean. Amen? I mean, when we walk for Jesus, we ought to go... Because we're squeaky clean. Amen? <laughs> That's good stuff, ain't it, Jimmy? <laughs> you can picture it. I'm done. I'm through preaching tonight. It's a short sermon, but listen to me. Spend this week praising God, putting some seed in the presence of God. Amen? If you ain't got nothing to praise God about, praise God that the sermon was short. <laughs> Amen? By the way, the sh sermon was short this morning. But the greatest sermon that's ever been preached happened when heaven broke in and took one of our loved ones home. You can't tell me that that didn't touch everyone's heart. Amen. Thank God for the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand with me before it becomes a long sermon. Love the singing. Love the fiddle playing. 
I love when Jimmy fiddles around. I love it when the other Jimmy rat a tats around. We're going to approach a few stressful days in the future, but that's okay. We're, we're going to celebrate because we're sending eternal things to the throne. Yeah. Please remember this, and this is important that you remember this. Once you get inside the throne room, every, all your praises, all your prayers, all your worship becomes, becomes eternal. Nothing dies in the throne room of God. Nothing gets into the throne room unless it is cleansed and made alive by the presence of Jesus. You ought to spend more time sowing seed in heaven because that's where you're going to have your bumper crop. That's where you're going to have your joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's where you're going to have your victory as they sing we want to invite you